to share with you a few things that we're doing differently than these guys. Some things are the same, though. I think uh, it's very interesting to see how we each uh, approach the needs of, of our various organizations. Um, so the quick overview, Comcast, big cable company, Comcast Interactive Media, 400 people within that big cable company uh, focused on making it easier for uh, customers to consume uh, content and connect with each other via a variety of webmail properties, uh, or mail properties including webmail. I've been at Comcast for about five years, coming up on five years soon, and I've been in analytics for that same amount of time, uh, where I focus on talent management, vendor management, metrics, financials, stuff you see, excuse me, the stuff you see there. Uh, so a few things that I want to touch on, number one, organizationally, where should analytics live? Um, a process that we've come up with that I call our monthly metrics close um, and a few thoughts on talent management. So where should analytics live? There's an old Welsh saying, I think it's Welsh, I'm kind of making that up. Uh, Where'er thou, thou art, act well thy part. Um, I've been in several different groups and I've had to learn to leverage the strengths but understand the weaknesses of being in each of those groups. So for a while when I first started in, in analytics I was in tech ops and that was great. Got the code on the page, it was really uh, helpful. Um, however, our influence was fairly limited. Um, then I moved into strategy. And in strategy, we had much more influence, but we weren't really involved with the day-to-day. -day. And uh, some of our decisions kind of suffered for that. We, we saw the big picture items, but we missed a few small trends that were starting to bubble up. Uh, then I moved into finance, and I was thinking uh, of this earlier when uh, Joe from Expedia gave his presentation. He talked about the one source of truth. Well, f from a revenue perspective, finance is the one source of truth. These guys have been developing gap rules, and they have a standardized way of thinking about how to count things. Uh, and while we don't have that for analytics, and nor do I hope, I hope we never go there, um, there is something to be said for the independence, the, the measurement. We're a yardstick that is not influenced elsewhere. That's kind of a strength. However, putting our numbers next to financials is, is inviting some trouble, especially with, with amorphous metrics such as unique visitors. So understanding kind of the strengths and the weaknesses and exploiting those strengths and covering the weaknesses, I think is uh, important wherever you are uh, to maximize the opportunity of, of the data that you have at your disposal. A few thoughts on the monthly metrics close. We get our executive team together. This was driven by my boss, our CFO. Uh, he convinced his boss, the president of our division, to gather his entire staff together once a month. Uh, in fact, the meeting's happening right now as I speak, so I have a little team redundancy built in. My, uh, a guy on my team is running it this month. Um, and we get together and we talk about our goals and how are we doing relative to those goals. And the first page we review there indicates of those seven goals. And by the way, before last year, we never had seven goals we had that could be measured. They were just kind of all over the map. Um, working together with finance forces you to be a little more specific on exactly how you're going to measure something. Things that our consultants were telling us for a long time, but we never really listened. So we track how we did in the previous month. How did that compare to the budget? What is our annual goal and are we pacing to hit that goal? And as we started the year of these uh, seven circles, five of them were either red or yellow. And over the course of the year, we have gradually turned attention to each of them. And it's been interesting, the, the one red here, our monthly unique visitor number, is dicey as to whether or not we're going to hit that or not. But we are able to have conversations about different options. And we can say, if we do Project X, we're going to influence this number. And if we don't, we'll come in a little bit shy. Are we okay with that? We can start to make these trade-off decisions collectively as an organization at the executive level. And this has really trained the organization to focus on hitting the goals that matter most. And if there are some other strategic goal that comes in mid-year, we can say, you know what, we can do that thing. We can spend time and, and we can send traffic to that site. but that will have a material impact on our ability to hit goal number three, for example. Um, so it's been great to have those conversations to foster the communication like that. A few thoughts on building a first-rate team, and both Sherry and, and Colin touched on this. Um, the ideal analyst is a mysterious animal. 
uh, he's he and she, or she they're, they're out there but they're a little hard to find um, you're, we're looking for people I'm looking for people who think logically who will question assumptions they're not a yes man or a yes woman uh, that they have a, an entrepreneurial drive that they have experience ideally acquiring customers uh, that they're strong with Excel and these that Excel thing kind of flies in the face of uh, someone who can stand up in front of maybe can stand up in front of an executive and say no don't do it that way do it this way it seems like uh, in my experience anyway analysts tend to be a little bit more introverted so you have to find people that are able to be in both worlds uh, and once you have found a pipeline cultivate that pipeline um, Sherry mentioned the intern uh, concept working for her we we've done that we've cultivated relationships with a number of universities and we're always on the lookout. We found great success by looking offline, so direct mail has that customer acquisition experience. It's worked well for us. Um, and then once you find those people, you need to keep them happy, allow for advancement, um, adding responsibility, give them exposure to the executive team. Um, in my experience, just as Sherry said, we can teach on the It's harder to teach problem solving, entrepreneurial drive, things like that. Um, and then one other thought on there, I've found a lot of success in reaching out to top students from regional schools. Um, it seems like the larger schools have their eyes set, although maybe not so much anymore on investment banking. They probably still do. Um, and the, the smaller schools at the very top, the cream of the crop there, are very good uh, in my experience. Uh, but they try a little bit harder because they feel like in order to make it on, on, uh, under the lights on the big stage, they have to work a little harder. And we've, we've found great success uh, with that strategy. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>